Hey everybody, happy Saturday evening, live tutorial stream. Let me make sure that I have sound. Um, welcome to the conclusion of our spooky week of tutorials. Yes, it is. It's the end. We have reached the end of, well, we haven't quite reached the end of the spook because we still have our sales stream. But um, I am, I am the Green Fairy, your hostess. For this evening's spoopy fun times, I will be joined on the live sales stream by the chooser of the slain and Ellen of the ways. Um, thanks, Ace. Uh, but uh, Ellen is going to um, play along with us off camera on the kyanite broom necklace, and uh, the chooser of the slain is doing, you know, worky things because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> work. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lori. I'm becoming more slain. Oh, she's, oh, I see. She's not doing worky things. She's doing costumey things. She, she is um, becoming more exciting with the makeup. Yes, I did. I tried to do exciting makeup. And thanks, Tanya. Uh, and then there, there were incidents when I was putting in my, which you probably, you may or may not be able to see on stream, but I actually have um, colored contacts in. So, um, yeah, I think there was some makeup on my finger. <laughs> Hi, Pam. And so, so then I cried off half of my makeup after I put my contacts in. <laughs> Whoops! Because order of operations, people, when creating a look, yes. is a thing. You do it wrong, and then your hard drawn, you know, your 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 wings and no, nah, they go away. Okay. But hey, huh. I'm here. You're here. We're all here, and we are gonna do this project today. This is our kyanite broom. Um, and this project is really fun because um, it can be so so obviously you know broom which is broom you know brush away all the negative energy get on it fly you know destructify all the negative people all of that but you can also take this exact same technique flip it upright and it becomes a wand um, which is good for energy work and you know anything that that you need to kind of you know wave a crystal around for you know you can make it as a wand. So so it's really just a, a question of like what kind of stone are you using and how do you want to use this piece. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. Alright, so we're going to need... So for the broom... Um, oopsie! Don't anybody tell Heather she was just on the internet, okay? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you were on the stream last night. You're not normally on the stream <laughs> on Friday night. So I forgot to turn you off. Uh, Vikings. I know. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I was really turned the other way, apparently. For, for this particular project, you need um, a kyanite fan. And the ones that I have are coated. They're uh, titan titanium coated kyanite fans, but this is a natural kyanite formation, so you can get this uncoated, um, and you can also get it, of course, with other coatings. But to, to make the broom look specifically, you... <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment about that. What? I'm not on yet. No, Asa just said he usually has the opposite problem with women. So, so you you have the the problem of, of not putting them on camera when they want to be on camera, as opposed to having them on camera when they don't want to be on camera. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Oh my! Here. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a thought? I know. Well, no. I, it it sounds like Ace's Ace women. The right I was gonna say it sounds like Ace's women want to be filmed, and he's just not having it. <laughs> 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 so so yeah, it's a kyanite fan. Um, if you're going to do a broom, if you're going to do a wand, then you just need some kind of a of a crystal. And I will tell you from experience, like if you can find one with a convenient protuberance right there, uh, it makes it a lot easier to wire wrap it. Convenient protuberances are helpful for so many things. You're gonna Aren't need just you're gonna need wire. You need two gauges of wire. You need a heavy and a light. So, um, in, on the internet, uh, in the supply list, I said 18 and, 16 and 18, I believe. What we're actually using today is 18 and 20 because this is all the 16 
that we have left in the entire store, mm. and I have no, three... No, I have another two, I think. Okay, well, I thought that this was all of the 16 <laughs> that we had left in the entire store, and we have three people making the project tonight, including myself, so 18 and 20 is what y'all get. That works. Thank you. <laughs> Yay for gratitude. Um, you're going to need four feet of the smaller gauge, so everyone's got four feet of the 20, and then two feet of the thicker gauge, so two feet of that 18. And then you're going to need some accent beads if you so choose. You don't have to use accent beads, but I've got, um, I'm, I used two on my prototype. So I'm going to start by taking my 20 gauge wire, my thinner wire, so whether that's 20 or 18, depending on really stop falling down. Well, picking things up off the floor with the wings is really, um, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a thing all day today. The, the beating dreams is not designed for people with wings. <laughs> no, nor is it designed or for horns. people with cloaks. Yeah. Or horns. Yeah. Or horns. Yeah. So yeah, Ellen has a lovely pair of horns and <laughs> thankfully we weren't very crowded <laughs> when you got here because otherwise there would have possibly been some traffic issues. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to take your thinner wire, so your 20 or your 18, and depending on whether you're using 20 and 18 or 18 and 16, and you're going to cut it in half. So you've got two two foot pieces of your thinner wire. Now I'm going to take my two two foot pieces of 20 and my one two foot piece of 18, and I'm going to line them all up so that the ends are relatively lined up. Since I am absolute crap at cutting my wire the same lengths, my ends don't completely line up, but I just want to, you know, have them relatively lined up. And, sorry Jenny, did I not give you tools? No, this is just yours. Oh, that's awesome. And then you want to find the middle, so you want to kind of fold everything in half at the middle. I have an extra round nose and an extra cutter if you okay. want to not have to share. All three of them. All three of them. Hold all three of them together and find the middle. Now, scramble around your work area because Allison didn't tell you you needed this. Oh, oh excellent. Oh, oh, what is it? It's a marker. Okay. And also, it's a, my drawer is... My drawer won't open and it won't close. Okay, it's closed. There's a marker for Jenny. Alright, so find a marker. Find another marker because you just threw that one on the floor and you're not picking it up. So That's okay. It sounds I have so very many familiar. <laughs> I have lots of markers. Okay. But thank you, Ellen of the Wave, for retrieving my marker. All right, so marker, a dowel, a, a bail making pliers, anything that's approximately, you know, eh, about three eighths of an inch in diameter. You're going to take that and you're going to drop your wires over top of it. Okay, so I've got the center of my wire and I'm just going to uh, place my marker at that center point and then I'm going to kind of pull it so that my wires are folded around that marker. Now, um, I'm just going to take my um, left hand, so I'm right handed, my markers are my right hand. Um, my left hand is going to hold my wire, and I'm going to hold about six or so inches away from where my marker is. So what I'm creating here is this is going to be the length of the handle of your broom or the handle of your wand. Okay, so six inches for me I think is a pretty good size. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter. Um, obviously if you're going to make it too much longer, you may want to start this project with a little bit more wire than I originally said. So now I'm going to hold firmly with my left hand. I'm going to take that marker and I'm going to start twisting it around. So that I'm twisting all of these wires together. Now, the important thing here is you got to hold yeah. like your life depends on it with your left hand. Otherwise that twist is just going to progress way further down your wire than you want. So just hold it. Try not to pop off your press-on nails that you wore because you thought they'd be cute for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, that would be my makeup all over again. Well, I mean, to be fair, I'm wearing the same flavor of press-on nails I normally wear. I just decided that it might be fun 
for Halloween not to cut them down, so they're way longer than I usually wear them, and it's been an interesting day with the long nails. I don't know any of you all out there who routinely function with nails that are that are this long. I don't know how you do it, but bless you. That is a skill set that is worthy of admiration because I don't have it. Now, as far as how much do you twist, that's totally up to you. I mean, I like to, since the kind of the idea of the of the broom is, is to make it sort of a hanging piece, you want to have a decently sized loop to hang it either on a wall or in a window or however you want to use it, this piece. Um, so you can keep twisting. If you feel like you want a smaller loop, um, then your marker will let you make then you can at some point take your marker out and then you can just keep twisting that closed but I think I'm good with this size um, which is about a half inch diameter loop and then what I should have down here at the bottom are now six pieces of wire which may be a little bit entangled which is fine just unentangle them that's not a word um, separate them there we go that's that is a word I know that separate is a word, much like decorate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to separate these out just so that we can identify which wires are which. Okay, so now you should have kind of a, a you know, whiskey stabby thing. Now we're ready to add our kyanite or our crystals. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to secure that. Um, kyanite or crystal with one of our 20 gauge wires. So what we want to do is we want to take one of those 20 gauge wires and we want it just to be going straight down the back of that kyanite like so. So I'm going to pick one of my 20 gauge wires, it doesn't really matter which one, and I'm going to put it um, just so it's going to go straight down the back of my kyanite. I'm going to take my kyanite fan and I'm going to lay it on top of that wire, like so. So I've got the tip of my kyanite fan right at the base of my twist. I've got that wire going straight down the back. Now I'm going to hold it firmly against my kyanite and I'm going to start wrapping it around my kyanite fan. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to wrap it around the bottom of my fan. Yes, if you, can you see? Yes. Did you see Jenny? Okay. I've got in-person peeps who aren't, who, who can't see the broadcast, so it's like, I've got to show, okay. got to show everybody all the good things. <laughs> all right, so I've wrapped around the bottom. So anytime that you're wrapping any kind of a stone that doesn't have a hole in it, you know, your, your main goals are obviously to make it secure. So you want to make sure that you turn on all your lights um, that has absolutely nothing at all to do with your stone it's just about making sure you turn on all your lights but you want to make sure that it's secure so that involves holding it in from the bottom and holding it in from the side so once I wrap once around the kind of the bottom the tip just the tip of that kyanite then I'm just going to take that wire and I'm going to spiral up to hold the rest of my kyanite in. And my goal here is to um, just spiral once or twice around my kyanite and then at that point I'm going to pretty much be out of wire on this particular wire with which I'm working and so I'm going to anchor that off right here on my little broomstick. Now if you feel like eh, it's really not secure at this point Allison, it's a little wobbly, don't worry we still have five more wires to go. No worries, we will reinforce this baby, but good. But at this point, our this wire that we're working with, at least in my case, is pretty much done. So I'm just going to wrap that once around my little broomstick and press down the pokey stabby bits.
she says, while utterly failing to press down the pokey stabby bit. Swish! There we go. Okay, so this is, this is where we're at right now. So we have the base of our kyanite broom and in that we have, we've started to secure our kyanite into our structure here. We've made this, we've made the um, stick of our broom. So now we're gonna grab another one of our 20 gauge wires. So I'm saving my 18 gauge wires for some more of the decorative work a little bit later. And now I, I don't need to go down the back. Like going down the back was just, you know, one portion of the structure. I've already done that. So now I can take one of my 20 gauge wires and I'm just gonna spiral wrap from the top of my kyanite around to the bottom and then back up to the top. Okay, so just like a descending spiral and then an ascending spiral. And that's gonna help again with the anchoring and make sure you leave yourself enough to do a decent anchor at the top so I actually didn't get all the way down my broom with that I just got halfway down and then back up but it's already so much more secure so then I can take that and anchor it off on my little broom handle Does it feel more secure? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Yay. Well, it's an organic project. It is. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to, let's see, what am I going to do? <laughs> Heather is upgrading her costume while I'm teaching. That's not fair. <laughs> Yeah, you set the bar pretty high. What? Whatever. <laughs> okay, so we have now I'm um, I've got four wires left. I want my two 18 gauge to be for this kind of spirally stuff that's going up the handle. So that means I've got basically one more 20 gauge to do a little bit more anchoring on my kyanite, and then I've got one to finish anchoring and add my accent bead. So I'm going to find another 20 gauge wire, which is this one, and I think I'm going to concentrate. So at this point, you kind of need to identify where where are your weak spots? Where do you feel like this is not secure? And that's where you want to concentrate. I feel like I want to anchor the top, the point more to the, the kind of broom handle. So I'm just gonna go around the top with this one. I'm gonna make uh, basically like a cap for my kyanite. And by cap, I mean organic wire wrapped construction that goes around the top of my kyanite. Once I'm out of wire, again, I'm gonna anchor it around my broom handle. Make sure there are no pointy stabbies. And then the last thing we're going to do with the 20 gauge wire is we're going to add our accent beads. So, which one's the 20 gauge? This one's the 20 gauge. It is hard to tell because they are close, but it, it's whichever one is less stiff. Because <laughs> Heather's not here, you know, working with the Vikings. So, so we, have, we have less stiff wire tonight. So I'm just going to add my accent bead and then touch. wrap around. <laughs> and then if you want to add a second accent bead, you can add that at the top and then again anchor around your broomstick. And I think I'm just going to do one accent bead, actually. I'm kicking that bead off the island. So that I can get a good anchor around my broomstick. And um, you can either wrap till the end of your wire or you can uh, cut it off. I'm going to take my pliers and wrap to the end of my wire. So again, if I were doing this flipped over and I were doing it with something like a quartz point, you know, your principles still apply. So you, you know, you're going to anchor, you know, go down the back and, you know, come around to the end of it and then, you know, wrap around, add your accents, utilize your, you know, protuberance here 
to help you anchor it into your wand, but anytime you're wrapping a crystal, you just have to, of course, remember that physics is a thing, and, you know, you gotta access all of the, you know, features of your stone to help you keep it in place. So once you've added your accent bead or beads, now we get to do the fun part, which is all of this swirly whirly stuff going up the handle. And that is literally completely free form. So here we go. <laughs> uh, so basically the two techniques that I used on this were coiling around and then making circles. So coiling around is easy. I'm going to take my 18 gauge wire and I'm just going to literally wrap it round loosely my handle to make circles. Just bring it in front, rotate it around. There you go. You can make another circle. You could go crazy and make a third circle. Like so. So circling, coiling around, and then circling in a flat plane. Alright, when you run a, when you run out of wire, just wrap it around your handle to anchor it. Leaves you with one more wire. Ah, pokey stabby no good. Pokey stabbies go away. Alright, so that leaves you one more wire to embellish with as you see fit. Most of my embellishments from that first wire were down here, so I'm just going to kind of swirl it up and do a little bit of embellishment up here. But again, you can coil around, you can circle, flat. You can also do like a half circle and go behind to make a coil. And then another circle. Or not. But literally there is no there's no pattern for this. It's just messing with your wire until you get something that looks good to you. Once you're done, make sure you anchor it off, squeeze in your pokey stabby bit. And then if you have any bits, um, like I do right here where it's your wire is a little bit looser than you think you might want it to be, um, you can take your chain nose and you can do what's called a Z-bend which is grab that wire and then just twist your chain nose. What that's going to do is it's going to put a bend in your wire. You can see it right there and it's going to tighten everything up. So Z-bends are a really good tool when you're wire wrapping if you want to make things tighter than um, you made them initially. Also, if you want to do more embellishment on the handle of your broom, you can very easily grab another piece of either 18 or 20 gauge wire um, anchor it on at the bottom and then just continue with this with this swirly whirly stuff for as much you know craziness as you want to do. But that spoopy people is our kyanite broom tutorial. And I have two. Do you think they'd make good earrings? Maybe they're a little long. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us on the Beading Dreams spoopy live tutorial stream for our kyanite broom. We appreciate so much each and every one of you. Don't forget, it is Sips Shopping and Shenanigans Night on the Beating Dreams stream, so I am the Green Fairy. I will be joined on our sales stream by the Morgan and the Chooser of the... The Morgan, who is the Chooser of the Slain, and Ellen of the Waves. We will be drinking Death in the Afternoon, um, which is a cocktail using uh, Absinthe, the Green Fairy, referencing death, the Morrigan, and you can drink it in the afternoon when people sometimes get lost and Ellen of the Waves helps them to find their way home. So so yeah, we're going to have a fun, um, fun sip shopping and shenanigans stream. We've got some spooky charms for you in sterling silver. We've also got a brand new 8-inch gemstone trunk show 
Um, so we will have trunk show strands and um, silver charms for you on this stream at 7.30 p.m. So, hey, I am, um, sometimes I'm the Dream Fairy. Uh, most of the time, I'm just Allison from Beating Dreams in Dallas, Texas. We are, of course, an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. You can find us here on Lover's Lane in Dallas, Monday through Saturday from 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream five times a week with complimentary tutorials we are here monday through saturday at 6 p.m plus thursdays at noon and we do live merchandise sales every wednesday and every saturday at 7 30 p.m that means you'll be back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream with our saturday night sale at 7 30 that's going to be in about 45 minutes that's like 15 minutes longer than we normally have. That's really exciting. That's crazy. I know, right? Um, which is good because I need to, you know, go get a tray of merchandise to, you know, sell. So, everybody who's going to be with us for the tutorial stream, we are looking forward to seeing you in 45 minutes. Don't forget to pour yourself a cocktail. It doesn't have to be a death in the afternoon. Get you something, self something fun to drink. Um, get a snack. Make sure you got some hydration. Get comfy, get cozy, and get ready for some retail therapy in the comfort of your living room, office, or wherever you habitually watch the Beating Dream stream. Heather and I are going to go um, finish our closing duties, get all of our merchandise together, and we'll see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream at 730.